In the modern era, vehicles with liquid cooling systems have become the standard, marking significant technological advancements in the automotive world. Liquid cooling systems, or water-cooled engines, involve circulating water or coolant within the cylinders to maintain a stable engine temperature. This system is more efficient than air cooling, as it better regulates engine temperature, ensuring optimal performance. But did you know who first conceptualized this revolutionary idea? Scott Flying Squirrel is one of the most innovative and unique classic motorcycles. Produced by the Scott Motorcycle Company from 1926 to 1950, the company's founder, Alfred Angus Scott, introduced the concept of water-cooled two-stroke engines in the early 20th century, a groundbreaking idea at the time. Born in 1875 in Manningham, Bradford, England, Alfred showed a keen interest in technology and innovation from a young age. By the age of 22, he held over 50 patents, most related to two-stroke engines and vehicles. Alfred was also deeply involved in cave exploration and served as the second president of the Gritstone Club. Tragically, Alfred passed away in 1923 due to pneumonia after returning from a trip to Bradford in wet clothing. In 1904, Alfred Scott began developing water-cooled two-stroke engines, a significant step that later transformed motorcycle history. Two-stroke engines are inherently simpler and more efficient than four-stroke engines, but have heat management challenges. Scott's liquid cooling system effectively addressed this issue. In 1908, Scott unveiled the first motorcycle using a water-cooled two-stroke engine, a major automotive innovation at the time, demonstrating Scott's vision for creating more reliable and efficient vehicles. Scott motorcycles quickly gained a reputation for their reliability thanks to this innovative design. Scott's liquid cooling system had unique characteristics that set it apart from modern systems, such as cooling the cylinder head. Initially, only the cylinder head was liquid cooled, while the lower parts were still air cooled, reflecting Scott's early understanding of managing heat in critical engine areas. Scott designed and patented a vertical twin two-stroke engine in 1904 and patented the familiar Scott motorcycle frame in 1908, designed to accept an engine of the type in the former patent and to achieve a low center of gravity. The resulting motorcycle was launched in 1908, featuring a 450 cubic centimeter two-stroke twin cylinder water-cooled engine. Innovative features included a patented two-speed chain transmission in which the alternative ratios were selected by clutches, operated by a rocking foot pedal, and a kick-start also patented. The first few machines to his design were produced by Bradford-based car firm Jowett in 1908, and soon after, he set up as a manufacturer in his own right at the Mornington Works, Grosvenor Road, Bradford. In 1913, Scott continued to develop more powerful and efficient models, such as the 550cc, and the 532cc. Scott motorcycles were marketed as a kind of luxury wheeled horse for the Edwardian gentleman. However, there was valuable publicity to be had in competition success, and the early Scott motorcycles were so powerful that they often easily beat four-stroke motorcycles of the same capacity. Scott made several appearances at the Isle of Man TT races between 1910 and 1914 with specially built racing machines. In 1910, a Scott was the first two-stroke motorcycle ever to complete a full TT course under race conditions. And in 1911, a Scott ridden by Frank Phillip gained the TT lap record of 50.11 miles per hour, continuous average speed. This winning streak continued with Scott's being the fastest machines in 1912, 1913, and 1914, and winning the event in 1912 and 1913.
Three months after the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, Scott announced they had received a large government contract, and the launch of their 1915 models would be delayed. This marked the end of production of civilian Scott motorcycles for the duration of the war. However, Scott was engaged to produce motorcycle and sidecar, based mobile machine gun batteries, with 18 machines being sent to the front for testing at the end of 1914. After the war, production restarted with the 532 cubic centimeter standard tourer. And in 1922, Scott introduced the Squirrel, its first sporting model to be offered to the general public. This had a slightly smaller 486 cubic centimeter engine to bring it within the 500 cubic centimeter competition limit, but with aluminum pistons and careful preparation, it produced more power. The Super Squirrel, with a further revised engine of 498 cubic centimeters, or 596 cubic centimeters, became the mainstay of production in the mid-1920s, followed by the Flying Squirrel. Although they never regained their pre-war form, Scots continued to compete successfully in sporting events, scoring a 3-4 in the 1922 TT and a third in 1924. In 1926, the Scott Flying Squirrel made its debut at the Earl's Court Motorcycle Show in London, quickly capturing attention with its sophisticated design and outstanding performance. The bike was equipped with a 596 cubic centimeter water-cooled two-stroke twin-cylinder engine. This engineering marvel, featuring a bore and stroke of 74.6 millimeters by 68.2 millimeters, and a compression ratio of approximately 7 to 1 produced around 30 horsepower at 6,800 RPM. With a three-speed gearbox and a top speed of about 70 miles per hour, 110 kilometers per hour, the Flying Squirrel became a symbol of power and elegance, making its mark in the world of motorcycling. By the late 1920s, the Scott Motorcycle Company faced financial challenges. Despite their product's high quality, high production costs, and intense competition led to difficulties. However, with the support of a loyal enthusiast community, Scott persevered and continued producing motorcycles. In 1931, Scott introduced a new model with a larger, more powerful engine, quickly becoming popular among racing enthusiasts. In 1937, the Scott Flying Squirrel achieved a new maximum speed of 80 miles per hour, an impressive feat for its time. This speed milestone highlighted the advancements in motorcycle technology driven by Scott's innovations. The bike became increasingly popular among riders seeking high performance. In 1950, the company went into liquidation and was acquired by Scott enthusiast Matt Holder's Erco Jig and Tool Company in Birmingham. From his premises in St. Mary's Row, Holder initially continued to build the same model from Shipley made spare parts. These Birmingham Scots remained available into the 1960s. In 1958, the Birmingham Scott was updated by adding a swinging arm frame, and the dynamo was replaced by an alternator. Although the new 493 cubic centimeter motorcycle, called the Scott Swift, was announced, it never went into production. Looking back at the history of the Scott Flying Squirrel, we can appreciate the immense innovation brought by Alfred Angus Scott and his company. From water cooled two stroke engines to sophisticated frame designs, every element of these motorcycles reflects a vision and dedication to quality and performance. Hope this information proves useful to all of you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting future videos.